So the small pipes, the real pipes, come in a small bagpipe case uh, with the extra tube and bagpipe cover and a few accessories. And after spending half an hour setting uh, all the pieces together, we will uh, have a look at these bellows and get things going. It's week two of working with the small pipes. And this is what I've learned so far, is that I need to get the strap way up higher on my arm, right up on my bicep, and because uh, it's so much easier to play, to get the leverage on the bellows this way. The other thing I've found too, and again, this, this may change for people with different body shapes, and men and women and all that, but that the strap is higher on my chest, like way higher than I had before. I had it down by my waist and it took so much uh, leverage. I was actually getting a little bruise on my waist. And a funny thing here, I'm using some little chopsticks to shut the drones off and on. Uh, there is the, the master switch down here which turns it off and on, and I've had that off. But I'll show you later, I'm starting to try to tune the drones, and it allows them to be shut off one by one. In terms of, I've been doing about 15 minutes a day, I find that's as much as I can handle. And I was working on scales initially, and trying to hold the note steady. And it's certainly trying to get the, the right amount of air, pressure, So even though the real pipes have that nice little uh, drone switch on here which you can turn the drones off or on and you can do it with your chin even so you can do it while you're playing which is pretty cool. When they're on you still have to be able to tune them individually and that's a little bit challenging. So what I have done, it works pretty well, is I just cut a uh, chopstick and uh, smoothed, smoothed it down a little bit and it just drops in place. I mean, you can use a golf tee or something else. This just happened. I just happen to have chopsticks around. I'm not looking to be winning any awards for looks or anything right now. It just has to be quick. And if I find that the uh, drones hold their tuning uh, very stably, as they probably will, then uh, I'll take all that stuff off. So right now it's just a little bit of hemp though tied to that chopstick. Works very well. It's hard to get the right amount of pressure on the grace notes. You start kind of clamping down and shutting off the uh, chanter. That becomes a real issue when it comes to the drones as well. So I'm going to start taking these drones on one by one. And the pressure on each drone is a little bit different. So I probably need to uh, play with the reeds inside the drones and get them to shut off and on at exactly the same moment. Each drone is inside a hole in, in this mount here. And if I take them out and show you, you can see that's a, an easy drone uh, reed. Plastic, very stable, with this little tuning screw at the bottom. And uh, I may have to adjust the bridle on these drone reeds at some point to make them all take air equally and shut off and shut on because there's a little bit of dropping out going on right now. But um, like all small pipes that uh, have plastic reeds, they're very stable and easy to go. And the other thing about bellows blown reeds is that they shouldn't have any moisture going through and the temperature remains relatively constant because it's room air. So that once they are tuned, they should lock in and not be influenced by uh, the moisture in your in your body. But they're they're pretty close right now. So um, I can open up the drones and just take one out at a time. So let's start with the uh, high G drone. Let's see how that sounds. High A. right now. I'm not too upset with that. I can tweak a little. It's, it's not really worth getting overly fussed exactly because once all the drones are on, 
uh, the amount of air going through it is so much more required that um, you're going to have to, you know, kind of balance them all. Uh, so let's try the uh, low. sensitive to the air pressure, the squeezing I'm putting on it too. So let's try sharpening them. There we go. Oh nice. Nice. Now, so let's try the uh, high A. Let's do the two sounds together. Take the little chopsticks out, they're flying all over the place. slightly dissonant sound on this, which gives it a little bit of body to the uh, three sounds. E. So I'm going to tune it on its own and take it off of the, uh, leave the other two bones plugged right now. here let's try all three drums and see if I can get the right air pressure to keep them going and not having them cut up different points I'm going to try a tune here, which I'm going to play on my other set of mouth blown small pipes called Lag and Love Song. You really want to start with slow airs at this point. I mean, there's just no point in racing forward on anything faster than a slow air. And these are Walsh small pipes in A. There's three drones. I've actually blocked off the mid E1. And I'm not using my bellows here, even though I hadn't taken the bellows off my arm yet. It's such a pain to pull them off and on. These are, these are mouth blown. And uh, I mean, these are really um, great little pipes too because they're 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 so simple. They just use a, a plastic reed that you could probably make yourself. They're so super cheap, and I could probably stand a little bit more hemp on this. This is a little bit loose. Chanter reed as well is just a small. Pipe. The Walsh small pipes, of course, have the plastic reed, which is uh, very durable and pretty low maintenance and you can see the holes themselves on the chanter have a uh, little bit of relief on them which, which tends to make it much easier to land your fingers on square. It, well first of all you can see on the entire chanter which uh, you can see the differences all the way along that the uh, Walsh one is that much easier to feel where the hole positions are with your finger. If you just compare the low G's you see that the Walsh one is so much bigger in size than the uh, real pipes. It's only the diameter of the hole is the same going into the chanter, but the landing hole where you land your finger on that uh, chanter is is cut out a bit on the Walsh, which makes it that much easier to play. So what I've done is that I've again made that little little notch in there that the, the Walsh one has got that much more texture on it. So I put a little tiny notch in it with a, a round file and uh, that fixed that up and again cosmetically it makes no difference. Be very careful with those holes though, make sure they're nice and clean and there's no dust or debris left inside the chanter or a ragged edge on the hole. Yeah, these are these are about seven hundred dollars Canadian and whoops, probably get a little bit of hemp on that too. That's real loose. That's what happens in the winter time here, everything dries up. These are made of polypenko plastic. So they're indestructible, they're tough. I travel with them, throw them in a bag in a suitcase, I just pull the drones apart and stick them in. But they definitely are not as fussy as the Morrison real pipes are probably going to be because they're, they're beautiful black wood with cane reeds and need a little bit more balancing. But 
Let's just see how these ones sound in tune right now. As, again, I've got the middle one taped off here. I find the sound is a little bit cleaner. And it takes less air to blow. It's a, it's a big bag and it takes, it's like a regular uh, bagpipe, Highland bag. So it takes a lot to get it inflated at the start. But once uh, it's going, it doesn't take that much air to go in and it's easy to balance. I'm still moving my arm up and down here like these bellows are connected to something, but they're not. But anyway, this is Lag and Love's song.
guess they get their point really well.